Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear friends, and happy Sunday morning to all of you, wherever you are. Father Bill Abbott, to, to his fans, of course, Father Bill Abbott was supposed to say Mass today, but he's under the weather, so please pray for him. And we also pray in this Mass for those who have gotten ill uh, with the uh, spike in COVID. So we offer this Mass for all of them and for our protection as well. My dear friends, as we begin our celebration of the Holy Eucharist, we ask for God's forgiveness, for God's mercy, for truly we have sinned. You were sent to hear the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us now glorify our God. Glory to God in the highest. And on, and on earth, earth, peace, peace to, to people of goodwill. Will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, and give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things, which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princess said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malchia, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. 
Ahmed Melek, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebed Melek, the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, come to my aid. Lord, come to my aid. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me. Lord, come to my aid. The Lord heard my cry. He drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mouth of the swamp. He has set my feet upon a crag. He made firm my steps. Lord, come to my aid. And he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Many shall look on in awe and trust in the Lord. Lord, come to my aid. Though I am afflicted and poor, yet the Lord thinks of me. You are my help and my deliverer. O my God, hold not back. Lord, come to my aid. The second reading is in the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear friends, the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized. And how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against his daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. My dear friends, the gospel, the good news of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. What will I do, Father? Please help me. The woman on the phone pleaded. I used to have a radio counseling show, and one night this woman Let's call her Laura called, desperate for ad advice. Although La Laura and her husband had worked, their jobs were not enough to make life comfortable for them. It was thus a use, huge help for them to be able to stay free of charge in an apartment owned by her husband's family. Her husband had four other male siblings and they and their wives stayed in one compound. In that compound, Laura became good friends with her in-laws, especially one who was paraplegic. In her spare time, Laura would visit her and volunteer to do household chores for her. 
She was devastated one night, however, to learn from her husband that his brother was cheating on the wife, the paraplegic. All the siblings knew about it. Laura's husband, however, warned her not to get involved. That's their business. That's their problem. If you disturb the peace in this family, we will be kicked out of this apartment. That's when Laura called our show. What would she do? She loved her friend and was pained by her situation, already sick and now being cheated by her husband. But if she told her the truth, she will be raising hell in that compound and they would lose their house. What will I do, Father? My dear friends, if I would ask you, what would you tell Laura? I share Laura's story because in our gospel today, Jesus seems to be prophesying precisely about the situation that our Laura found herself in. Clearly, Jesus is telling his dis disciples, telling us what is in store for us if we truly follow him. Biblical theologians admit that this is one of the so-called difficult teachings of our Lord. We love the image of our Lord that is friendly and accepting. He says, for example, imitate me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. The whole Bible refers to him as the long-awaited Prince of Peace. But in the Gospel today, he corrects us, saying he did not bring peace, but division. Indeed, division in the very families we love and cherish. My dear friends, is there a contradiction in these images of our Lord? On the one hand, a peacemaker, and on the other, a troublemaker. Not a contradiction, I would dare say, but more, perhaps, of a priority. Jesus comes first. Everything else is secondary, such as what we call peace on earth, or unity, or prosperity, or comfort. Our relationship with Jesus is primordial and must color or influence everything else in our lives, our activities, our relationships. Jesus himself models this for us. For him, his relationship with Abba, God, the one who sent him, is the priority. He preaches about this and courageously dies for it. In the process, as he indicates in the gospel today, he alienates family, friends, and of course, even his own people. We can therefore ask ourselves for today, how has our relationship with our Lord become a real priority in our lives? How has this influenced the big and difficult decisions we have made? Have we found ourselves standing up for Jesus and his values, perhaps against all odds? My dear friends, at a time when not just historical revisionism, but also ethical relativism have become fashionable, our gospel today seems to offer a stark reminder, if not a gentle rebuke for us all. We live in an age when truth and morality are dangerously being blurred or obscured. Indeed, how we have compromised them in lieu of personal interest or gain. Like in the case of our caller, Laura, should we choose comfort over truth or justice or morality? Significantly, when I presented her dilemma in seminars and workshops and asked people their opinion, most tentatively said, they would rather not rock the boat or disturb the peace. What happens then to truth? And should we just turn a blind eye on the injustices in this world in exchange for fleeting favors? 
what in the end is the big C of our lives? Christ or convenience? Let us end our reflections with this old but powerful prayer. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we arrived safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity, and in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider seas, where storms will show your majesty. Where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push into the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, a Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And, and by the Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now offer to God our prayers, our intentions, your radical love, Father, that we experience through your Son, Jesus, moves us towards radical choices and changes in our lives. Help us to always choose you above all things so we may live the fullness of life you have originally intended for us. Full of trust, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Father, make us love you more and more. In the spirit of synodality, may our church leaders remain faithful channels of your grace as they lovingly listen to the needs of the flock you have entrusted them, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Moved by your overwhelming and radical love for humanity and all of creation, may our national and local leaders and we, the citizenry, always and everywhere opt to make radical choices towards the common good and the care of our common home, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Heeding your example of unconditional love, Father, may all families grow stronger in love. Help them make the radical choice to stay in love with each other, especially in times when it is most difficult to love, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. Welcome our departed loved ones who have chosen you above all things in their earthly life into your heavenly kingdom, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. For those celebrating their birthdays, Ethan De Leon, Claro Alfonso, Ellen Reyes, Rory Catipon, Noel Del Prado, Eusebio Rabena, Celerina Ching, Crisabel Danau, Father Richard Ella of the Society of Jesus, and Father Bill Kreutz of the Society of Jesus, we pray. 
Father, Father make, make us, us love, love you more and more. And more. For the healing of Edward Chiong, Madi Harrison, Vicky Huvalia, Linda Ferrer, and Susan Jorge, we pray. Father, make, make us love you more and more. For the repose of the souls of Leslie Faraon Rabat, Marina de Ausen, Rosario Reyes, Ramon Laxon Fernandez, Melvin Calderon, Carlos Ching Sr., Victorio Puruganan Jr., and Gilbert Son, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. For the special intentions of Aga Camarata, Lina Rivera, and family, Dino and Lisa Halandoni, Rosanna and Eric Angeles, Faith Keepers, Flower Ladies, we pray. Father, make us love you more and more. And for all the intentions sent to our Facebook pages at JESCOM and Radio Katipunan, Father, make us love you more and more. Father, make us love you more and more. God, our Father, in your Son's incarnation, mission, passion, death, and resurrection, you made manifest your radical intent to love and redeem us. Help us mirror that same love towards one another so we too may become active agents of your communion and salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our it, God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and every word to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My dear friends, the mystery of our faith. We proclaim, proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until, until you come, come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops, all the clergy, and all your faithful. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. May you welcome them into the light of your face. We spend a few moments in silence and in prayer. Remembering those we have lost, especially during this pandemic. Have mercy on them, Lord, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray to our Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world, world have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
communion antiphon with the Lord there is mercy in him is plentiful redemption let us pray made partakers of Christ through the sacraments we humbly implore your mercy Lord that conform to his image on earth we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven he who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Please bow down for the final blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God come down on you and remain with you forever, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, the Mass is ended. Let us go serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Bye.